Hi guys, I just got myself a new microphone. <coughs> I'm using it right now, so uh, it's probably not as good as the Levelier microphone I have. It's a shotgun mic. I love the name for these things. <coughs> it just sits on top of the camera and it should reduce wind noise because uh, my videos from the shooting range is a shitty sound. So anyway, uh, what I was really going to talk about was uh, a thing that happened in Sweden that could be good and could be really shitty. But if it is shitty, it's just, uh, well, same situation as it is right now. <clears throat> so before 2015, and this is the reason I can have cool shit, and was the reason, uh, a shooting club could uh, get approval for their own shooting disciplines. So the shooting club I started back in 2012 with my friends uh, has their own shooting discipline where we shoot with uh, all the fun guns you can see in my videos. Really fun, it's uh, nothing special, it's just basically field target shooting with semi-automatics basically. Uh, we don't even fire any rapid fire strings or anything, just laying prone firing precision shots. Nothing fancy, just that we we want to do it with uh, modern firearms, that's the thing. So anyway, the police do not like this. They feel that we have the dangerous military firearms or whatever. Bullshit, basically. <clears throat> so, in 2015, the law changed. Before that, you didn't have to be part of any of the national shooting organizations. Uh, those were listed in, uh, well in a section in the police uh, rules and regulations basically uh, FAP 551-3 it's called <coughs> uh, anyway so there's a certain amount of national shooting organizations that have their official shooting disciplines like Olympic field shooting and trap and stuff like that for example and those uh, doesn't, do not have a problem getting licenses for their firearms but uh, the thing is, if uh, and, and this is the important thing, there it isn't possible right now in Sweden to start a new shooting discipline. Like uh, there's a lot of people in Sweden trying to start up a PRS uh, shooting, like practical long distance shooting, basically, and uh, that's really not possible. They have to use firearms they have from other shooting disciplines and modify them for PRS, and that's not op optimal. Because uh, those shooting disciplines, uh, like uh, Yevers 6.5, rifle 6.5, it's like a field target shooting with 6.5 by 55 rifles. Those rifles are very heavy. They use the Sauer 200 STR. Uh, many people use those, but those have a really heavy stock, so then you have to change the stock. You have to do this and that, and it's, it's not really meant for that. And, uh, it's really wrong. In Sweden right now you have to basically buy your rifle for one shooting discipline when you want to use it for another. And that's not how it's supposed to be. And, uh, and uh, those shooting organizations do not really like you doing that. Uh, like uh, starting, starting up uh, in, with their shooting discipline under false pretenses to get a rifle that you really want to use for another. That's uh, fucked up. And in our constitution, we have actually have something called Föreningsfrihet. And that's uh, like uh, freedom to start your own local organization or whatever. To, to group with a group of people with uh, similar interests and do whatever you like. That, that's uh, part of our constitution. And the police do not like this part of our constitution. They do not like anything, basically. So they want to control what we can do with our firearms. They want to control which firearms we want to use. And and uh, yeah, and uh, the bottom line is if the police got their way, we wouldn't be allowed to use any firearms at all. So that's the problem. And, uh, and uh, so the law changed in 2015, and now uh, to be able to uh, get a license for a firearm, you have to be part of a shooting club, and the shooting club has to be part of an authorized uh, national shooting organization. Then you can have a license. And the police says that you can only use firearms, you can only issue, they only issue licenses for firearms that are used in the national shooting organization's uh, rule, rule books. But as the law is written, uh, 
like our shooting club, we're part of three different national shooting organizations. So we are authorized because of our membership in those national shooting organizations uh, to issue uh, a thing called Föreningsintyg. And that's like a piece of paper that says uh, this person, uh, the board of the shooting club issues a piece of paper to the police that says this guy has a use, a legal use for this firearm he wants to buy and, and uh, he send, that person sends in an application, we send in that piece of paper and then the police uh, gets to decide if he gets to have that firearm and then he gets a license for that firearm. <coughs> so the, the problem is they don't accept our pieces of paper anymore. And that's against the law and there's a bunch of different uh, court cases and uh, first level of course is called Förvaltningsrätten. The shooters have won there all the time. The next level is called Kammarätten and the shooters have won there as well. And the police has just keep, kept appealing, appealing, appealing. And now we are at the highest court in Sweden, uh, Högsta förvaltningsdomstolen. And uh, the first thing they do is to decide if they're even going to take a look at it. It's called prövningstillstånd or uh, uh, approval for testing or whatever you want to call it. So uh, they accepted the case and they're going to take all the cases in one big lump. So they accepted the case and they're going to have a look at it and now we just have to wait for the, for the court to decide. And I think this is good news Be because if they didn't uh, give approval to test this uh, the police could have made up some other bullshit, but well, they didn't even look at it, we're still gonna deny you guys. But uh, now I'm hopeful that, uh, that the Högsta förvaltningsdomstolen will take a look at it and come with a really nice verdict, because these are the top uh, law lawmakers in the country, basically. So they're pretty serious, and uh, I don't think uh, they're gonna listen to the police, because the lower courts are basically just, oh, the police said this, the police said that, let's just listen to the police. So, uh, uh, this court will probably take a good look at the law and all the investigations and everything that led up to the law being made and they're going to come to the same conclusion as the other courts. Because the other verdicts that, that has been made are really well done and they explain in detail why they are supposed to be able to do this and especially since it would violate our constitution to, to not be able to do this I'm hopeful that we will see something good come out of this. But we're gonna have to wait because now they're taking a look at it, so we'll we'll see. Hopefully this year we come they're gonna come with a verdict. I have no idea how long this is gonna take. It will depend on it's probably not uh, a priority for them to come with a verdict on this, because they have a lot of other bullshit they have to take a look at. But I'm hopeful. Uh, I already have so much uh, stuff in my safe so I'm probably not that affected by this but hopefully uh, all the other people in my shooting club gets to buy the stuff they need to be able to compete with me and all the other people in the club already owning cool shit. Okay that's just a quick uh, update for us Swedes. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Have a nice day everyone.